All right, people, let's get started. Um, what you don't know is that in the meanwhile, our host, our digital host, had our introductory video. So um, welcome to the Crossomics Festival in 2022. And um, uh, my name is Alain van Gogh. I have the honor and the pleasure to host the, uh, today, but also to lead the uh, Netherlands Crossomics Initiative, which is the, uh, the reason why we're here. And um, we put together, uh, I think, a nice program which um, you probably know, uh, where after my introduction of what we do and what we aim to do, uh, I give the floor to Timothy uh, Abels, uh, our guest speaker, our honorary guest speaker. And then we have three sessions on the cell omics, and the individual omics and the population omics chaired by our young investigators. And I'll close it at around uh, five. So what you, there's about 100 people coming today and there's about 350 people online and I think that's kind of the future, how we're going to do these conferences in the future, um, saving a lot of time, travel and money, but these attendees online originate from 30 countries, so uh, uh, we actually got a lot of requests. Uh, I only will attend if Benny Solo will join and that's our digital host who you can see at the corner here. And we had our online version last year, which several of you attended. And uh, thanks to Benny, this was a great success. So in the meanwhile, there's a studio back here um, where he's hosting the online version. Uh, and today it should just be a good uh, day of science and fun. So I, uh, I hope you enjoy it. So the Netherlands Crossomics Initiative, let me shortly outline uh, what we are and what we do. And I think all of you here and in the world have seen a great power of omics in the molecular analyses. Like 20, 25 years ago, it started with the first arrays, and now we have uh, the whole genome sequencers, the next generation sequencers, the mass spectrometers, where we can look in amazing detail at all the molecular building blocks of life. But that by itself doesn't really cut it to the multi-omics approach that we like to do. That's the data. So the multi-omics data analysis is really key. And uh, within our consortium, we have several experts that actually try to make sense out of these combinations of data. And it's like with the blind man and the elephant try to picture how biology works. That's how we're going to look to biology. So uh, this integration of the multiomics really drives uh, several applications. And I'm a chair in uh, personalized healthcare, so we in our lab and other labs try to apply these omics technologies to get insights in biology, to identify new diagnostic biomarkers, um, to understand diseases, understand the mechanisms, and then to translate to new personalized therapies. And this is not as trivial as it looks like, and it's easy to put it on the slide, but it's really hard work to, uh, to make it happen. So um, our clinical omics, if we want to bring it to the clinical space, um, it's not there yet, very simple. And I put this slide up four years ago, and unfortunately we're still there. Uh, we're making progress, but we're not there yet. So both the technologies and the translation to the clinic needs to be brought to a more standardized, harmonized manner. Otherwise, we can never bring it to the clinic. And the genomics is really very advanced already, standardized with the same techniques. And if you have a genome from the UK or Australia or the Netherlands, you can pretty well integrate that. But with the proteome and the metabolome, that's much less so. And partly of that is the technologies, partly of that is just biology. Metabolites and proteins are just more dynamic. So we need to pay attention to the biology, but also on the analytics itself with the factors which are being mentioned here and just the implementation of the whole. And it makes a lot of uh, uh, difference whether you sample a metabolome before or after lunch, whereas for the genome, it doesn't matter. So that integration needs to be done. And we don't do that by ourselves. So our crossomics initiative is very much linked to all the logos you see on the right hand, which are either disease focused, technology focused, translation focused. And that harmonization is something we, uh, we try to do with uh, quite some effort. So our Netherlands crossomics initiative, for those of you who are um, less familiar, is part of the national roadmap of large scale research infrastructures. Um, a big funder in the Netherlands, NWO, um, funded this with, uh, with quite substantial amount of, uh, of budget and we supplemented that to a total project of 40 million, which is a project for 10 years. Um, and these large-scale research infrastructures are there to support researchers all through the Netherlands, but also beyond, to do advanced uh, science. Now, our job is actually to bring our technologies, and I'll explain them in a second, um, to advance them far beyond what is currently possible. So beyond the state of the art, as it's called. 
Secondly, we'd like to realize an integrated multiomics infrastructure. So scientists can actually use us and go for combined uh, genomics, multiple metabolomics, et cetera, approach. And thirdly, together with the researchers and users, we like to demonstrate the added value of multiomics analyses. And even though, and I just talked over coffee with a few of you, even though we've been working on this for 20 years, there's still not so many examples where multiomics really had a driving impact. But it's emerging big time. In the past year, we've seen quite some good examples that actually lead the way. So expect in, in two, three years, we totally do see a different picture. So that's our job, our challenge. So we have several pillars, and you see the names of the uh, uh, figureheads here. Uh, so the genomics is being coordinated by Marcel Nehle from the Rodboud. The proteomics part is coordinated by Albert Heck from Utrecht. The metabolomics part coordinated by Thomas Hankemeyer in Leiden. And the data analysis integration and stewardship by Peter Bramatoon from the Rodboud. And each of them has a, has a, uh, a backup coordinator, and together that's the core team, how we're, gonna, uh, how we're doing this consortium. And you've seen this house several times during um, the, the whole uh, branding that we've been doing. And we're building really a house where the pillars are the different omics technologies, the data is connecting that, and in combination, we build this infrastructure through an access for users, um, uh, providing a help desk either, and I'll outline in a second. We're gonna demonstrate it with multiple projects, uh, have training schools, and form this community. So I'll outline in the next slides um, uh, more details of that. So for any details, please go to the website, which contains all the information, which, is, uh, uh, which you can find there. Um, and in the course of this project, we boosted the capabilities of our facilities. So you see a number of machines here and, and pictures. But in total, we have about 35 next generation sequencing systems and about 70 mass packs, all ranging from very low content, high throughput, to high content, low throughput, to really make a uh, broad range of applications. And together with those technologies, we also have the data scientists that actually uh, try to make sense out of that and to merge that into a multiomics approach. So more on that, you can read on the website with this brochure uh, where we put down all the, the services and the capabilities. But to make it more active, we started to record several vlogs and you can find them on the website as well. And we took a snapshot of that. So there's many more on the website, so please check them out. And this leads me to Crossy, and you've seen this Crossy uh, everywhere through this room, and that's our so-called help desk assistant, which um, you can approach also for getting more clearance on what we can do as a consortium, but also what uh, kind of support can be given. And you can see there's like expert assistance for designing of your experiment, the sample prep, the analysis itself, or the full project. So um, that's how we organize that. So our demonstrations have been um, um, key, actually, to prove we we're able to do that, but also to prove the added value of multiomics. And from the beginning, we distinguished uh, impact in the cell studies or population, uh, individual studies or population studies. And if you want to study a cell, then cell signaling becomes very important. The fast dynamic changes in, in proteins, enzymes, metabolites, um, uh, the perturbations with drugs, etc which is different than an individual where you see the genome having an effect on the metabolome and the exposure on an individual person. And that is again different from population studies where you want to th study hundreds or thousands of people to identify risk factors for health and uh, try to find keys for prevention. So those challenges are very different. And within the consortium, we try to uh, uh, address those. So the, the demonstrations, how we're gonna put that forward is mostly through scientific publications. So we had about uh, 750, 800 since the start of the project, 340 last year. Um, and we broadcast these in our social media. So the LinkedIn channel, I think m many of you are part of that. And that community is now like 1500 scientists that actually uh, click on those news items. YouTube already mentioned with the vlogs and uh, uh, the training schools and Twitter. 
So the training schools, we've picked it up also to, um, to learn from each other. Um, some really good um, uh, demonstrations of what worked or what didn't work, but also pitch a project um, and to find guidance uh, among the ones that participate. And these are all online uh, um, through the YouTube channel. Our community already mentioned that through the social media and the networks, and uh, it's building. Um, we now have uh, quite some people in this community, and we clearly see the effect that there's a bilingual or bilateral uh, interactions there. So that's really good. So the outreach in summary, um, quite some publications last year, quite some LinkedIn posts, uh, website frequently visited. Um, YouTube was interesting. We had eight videos from the training schools, but uh, over 250 hours of watching time. Uh, Twitter, we just started, so I would like to make some noise, and actually it, it seems to pay off. So uh, today, we're at the fourth uh, Crossomics Festival. Uh, we do this as a hybrid meeting. Uh, already mentioned quite some people online, and it should just be a day of uh, science and fun. And the online version, which you won't experience here, was similar to what we did last year. So we had a whole lobby uh, where also you can have access to the Gather Town. And the Gather Town organized from the Crossomics is, is depicted here, where uh, the poster booth actually have, um, um, have a several online virtual booth, but also you can walk into the garden and there's all these posters that you can visit. Um, and many of the posters are here as well. Um, and also there on the top, uh, also for the people online, in the gray box at the top left there, um, you can visit uh, the website with all the virtual booth that we've built, uh, which is a 360 booth there. So with that, um, I mostly like to thank the sponsors because this is a free of charge symposium, uh, which is only being possible because of the sponsors. So do visit their booth and, um, and it's highly interesting because this is a combination of science, fun and technologies. So with that, I'd like to close this and invite Tim to the stage here.